Amen. Guys, you could all stand this morning. You could all stand. We're going to praise our Lord God. Good crowd out here today. Praise the Lord. And uh, we just pray that the presence of the Lord would just bless you as we sing our God. Hallelujah.
We're going to adore Jesus this Christmas season. And, uh, God is good. Praise the Lord. For his mighty presence. And can we give the Lord a round of applause this morning? He is good. <laughs> How thankful are you that you're alive today and that you have Jesus in your life? Can you just being alive today is a miracle? It's a miracle. Life is a miracle. Jesus is the greatest miracle of all. And he gives us eternal life after this life. So thank God. This is why we celebrate him. Amen? Amen. So, God and life. Can you see that this morning? Hallelujah. God bless. And uh, welcome this morning to our services. And great job today, Brian. Thank you for playing with us this morning. God bless you. Good job, your first time playing for our church. We just thank God that you were able to perform. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning, Ron. We're in that season, aren't we, huh? things. Let me put my glasses on so that I can read. Maybe. Anybody here for the first time? Ryan, right? Yes, sir. Welcome. You did a great job. Thank you. Hope we see you here standing on those things. All I will. I'll be here. <laughs> Many times I stood up here and said we need more people for worship. And here comes Brian. We still need more. We can get a bass in here. We can do other things. If you hear anybody or know anybody, we want to have them. Have them see Pastor. Uh, we are having another open mic night in uh, November. I mean, uh, March. <laughs> I'm good with it. What can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, so we'll have another open mic night in March. So prepare for that. It was a great one we just had, and they're eventful evenings. Uh, we still have a food pantry that Brian runs. Need to donate food, see Brian, or if you need food, see Brian, we'll take care of you, I'm sure. Um, after Pastor dismisses us, two things occur. We have an altar call up here with Pastor, and we have some fellowship in the back room for those that want to have fellowship. Uh, speaking of fellowship, I guess, there's a package over there under that Christmas tree. It's empty right now because... That's for this church's donations to Pastor's Christmas gift. So if you have a donation from Pastor, if you want to just drop it in the slot, if it doesn't fit in the slot, you can put it under the tree, either or. Uh, we accept anything, gold, silver, diamond, <laughs> beads to your home, whatever. <laughs> we can accept pennies, dimes, and nickels too, by the way. Um, with that, we have... Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm having a tough time up here because I've had a busy week. My wife came home from the hospital. Thank the Lord. She did a lot of pain, but she's doing real good. She's a real trooper. Um, donations. We uh, have not a collection here. We have a donation box over there on the wall. And every little bit helps us to continue to grow and serve the Lord, this church, and others. If you can't give monetarily, you can give of your time. Like people did when we decorated this church, or you can always pray. All these are gratefully accepted. If you out there, you can give too. If you want to do that, you can go to Abundant Grace Church NH.com, click on the donation bar, and you'll be in. While you're out there, by the way, in computer land, if you want to give to our package over there and can't make it in here, you can mail things to us. Uh, you can mail it to Abundant Grace Church, 127 Rockingham Road, Derry, New Hampshire. And if it's a pastor's gift, just put on a pastor's gift and we'll throw it in the box for you. Um, with that, we'll get Pastor up here. Uh, edify us in the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Appreciate that, brother. This big box over there, I'll probably be up here next week with a Rolex watch and you know, I'll have a. I'll be pulling in with a E450 and Mercedes Benz. And <laughs> so what's up with the pastor? Yeah, he went from a clunker to a. You deserve all that. <laughs> I appreciate that. 
I appreciate you guys. Thank you. God is good. It's good to see you all here. Great to have you all in the house of God this morning. And we got a lot of kids, so we're going to uh, dismiss these children now. So have fun in the kids. Uh, kids run your kids. And, uh, hey, uh, Sheila, I was going to ask you a quick question. Are you going to do it? Are you still doing that Christmas song? Yes. For Christmas Day? We had a Christmas Kids Choir going on, and uh, we just praise God for that. So uh, when we come on Christmas Day, you're going to really uh, enjoy it. For those who are watching on live stream, it, you can enjoy it. And again, like Ron said, if you want to give online, AbundantGraceNH.com, AbundantGraceNH.com, and you can just donate as the word leads, and we do appreciate all your help, because the church cannot function without the uh, donations of y'all. That's the only reason how we can make it. So we do appreciate all your faithfulness to the Lord because we can't. This isn't. We can't run this for free. We have to pay ourselves. So we appreciate your faithfulness to help keep the work of the Lord going. So God bless you. And uh, we're able to help a lot of people out too, whether they're, whether they're struggling, whatever it is. The church is able to help as those have need. So we praise God for you. And uh, God has a plan. And uh, looking forward to what he's going to do this Christmas season, and we're looking forward to what he's going to do in 2023. So without further ado, we're in part number six of our series, Acquiring Wisdom. You guys looking for some wisdom? Yeah. So we're going to get into the word, and uh, great singing today. Amy did an excellent job up there today. Thank you. Praise God. Excellent job. As usual, and the guitars, and the drums, everybody, and the keyboard, you guys did great. So just praise God for you, and thank you for your faithfulness. And so, for those who are watching, I pray that you are encouraged by this message as well. So, all right, we'll get started. Part number six. Good to see you, Debbie. God bless you. Debbie's a blessing. We appreciate everybody who's here. You guys are hungry for the word. That's what we're supposed to do, right? I can't believe only people came back after last week's message, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of depressed. So. <laughs> I'm like, I figured there'd be like five people here after last week, but you guys came back, so that's a good sign, amen? We don't tickle ears, man. We're not politically correct in this place, so we just kind of give what the Lord has, and then we just, you know, we don't force it on anybody, but we give the truth. Because the truth will make you free. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the awesome worship, and we do come and adore you. We, this is why we're here, for you. We need you, Lord, in our lives, and it's good to have this positive energy from your Holy Spirit. It's the positive power from, the, from you, Lord. And Lord, we need more positivity in this dark world where everybody's miserable and without joy, without peace, without happiness, without hope, without hope crisis, eternity, and wondering what's going to happen. Lord, we don't have to wonder. When we have you, we have your peace, we have your joy, and Lord, we have your protection. And we have eternal life, the Lord, we thank you for it. We celebrate you this season. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a lot of things in life that we need to understand. And the most important thing that we can ever understand is God's will for our life. Amen. Understanding God's will. That's the title of the message. Now you say, oh, I want to do God's will. What is God's will? That's the first thing I want to talk about today. What is God's will? You know what God's will is? He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So that means God says, before you were even born, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, guess what? God knew you. Before anything was ever created on this earth, God already knew everything about you. Do you know what that means? That God has a calling for you. You were chosen. It says, many are called, but few are chosen. You know why only few are chosen? Because only few are the ones that are willing to sacrifice and, and follow God's will for their life. Now, what is God's will? God's will is his plan and his destiny for your life. That's what his will is. His plan, his purpose, and his destiny for your life. Do you know God has a purpose for you? A lot of people say today, I don't, I don't know what God's purpose is for my life. You know, God has a purpose, and you can understand that purpose. Don't you want to reach your destiny, your God-given destiny? Do you know that God has great plans for you? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. He's got hope and a future for you. Do you know that, that God has a hope and a future and a blessing 
that he wants to give you. But why do so many people miss it? Because they don't do the will of God for their lives. Do you know part of the will of God is this? And we're going to get into understanding and how we understand it. I'm going to give you some scriptures. But here's the very important thing that we must dissect, we must look at, is this. The will of God is not always going to be easy. The will of God is not always going to be happy. The will of God is not always going to be a bed of roses. Sometimes the will of God is going to take you through some journeys, through some storms, through some hard times. You're going to deal with some battles and challenges along the way. But here's the good news about God's will. If you stay the course and you follow God's plan for your life, God will fulfill your destiny. Your destiny could be many things. You could be a business owner. God wants you to rise up and have a great business someday. Maybe you take over. You become a CEO or you become a vice president or a president of a company. Maybe God has a plan for you that he wants you to start a ministry. And he wants you to get involved in church. He wants you to be a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, a missionary. Who knows? Or maybe God has a plan for you to be able to battle some deal that's going on in your life. You're dealing with something that's very, a, a battle. Has anyone ever been in a battle? How about a court case or anything like that? Has anyone been in a court case? Can anyone raise their hand that's ever been in a court case or a battle? Look at all these battles. Wow, how many court cases have we seen? God wants to take the corrupt judges and confound them. And he's going to do that. If you do the will of God, he will confound the judges, he will confound the magistrates, he will confound all these people who are in charge. He will even confound the people who are coming against you, even the lawyers and people like that, because you know what? Jesus is your lawyer. He's about ready to confound some people. So if you're in a battle in a court case, get ready to win it. Are you excited about winning this case? The case is yours, you're going to win it, but you've got to do God's will first. I want to talk about understanding it. You may have a problem physically. Maybe you have diabetes, or maybe you have arthritis, or maybe you have some kind of uh, long COVID, or maybe you have some kind of acid reflux, or maybe you're dealing with cancer, or maybe you're dealing with uh, all kinds of afflictions that you have, genetics, high cholesterol. The list goes on and on and on, right? God says, by his stripes, you are healed. So God wants to heal your body. It's his will to heal, too. Amen? How do we understand the will of God? Don't you want to reach your destiny? Don't you want to marry the right person? Don't you want to buy the right home? Don't you want to invest in the right property? Don't you want to start doing things God wants you to do? Don't you want to make wise choices in your life? Don't you want to follow God's plan? Because you know what? You want to make God laugh? Tell him your plan. God will laugh real quick because, you know what, your plan and his plan are completely different. Don't you want to do his plan today? I want to explain how to do it. Now remember, Jesus, you know what God's plan was for Jesus? See that cross there? That's not all that fun, is it? He wasn't enjoying it. It wasn't too much pleasure for him to be on that cross, get beaten and whipped and scourged and spat upon, laughed at, mocked, suffered asphyxiation and he died a horrible grisly death so agonizing one of the worst deaths you could ever die and he said if if this cup of suffering pass from me let it be but he says nevertheless not my will but thy will be done he says i don't want to go on this cross without your presence jesus a war jesus needed god's presence and god put look upon jesus because Jesus took the sins of the world upon him. So he had to take it all without the presence of God. And he didn't want to go through that, but he says, your will be done. Even though I don't like it, I'm going to do your will. Here's the reason why. Because Jesus birthed in a family of billions upon billions of people, saved over all of these generations and generations, all these children of God in heaven. Because Jesus did God's will, he has you and he calls you his gift. Do you know you're the gift that Jesus has. He calls you a gift when you're saved. Can someone say amen? I'm his gift. He loves you. If you're saved, you're his gift. So I'm going to go to the book of Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 9. And I want to explain to you how to understand God's plan for your life. You know what? God has a plan for everyone. So that means this pertains to you. Are you a person of music? God has a plan for your music. God has a plan for what you're doing. He wants you to reach your goal. You say, I want to be something big in music. You know what? God can get you there. Don't do it your way. Do it God's way. You can invest thousands. You can invest millions. You can invest anything you want. And you can promote yourself. But guess what? All God has to do is send some guy to stumble upon your stuff and you become famous. Mm -hmm. And you invest nothing. 
When God is in it, he can do the impossible. When God is in it, when God wants something done, he will do it his way, his time, his purpose, his plan. And when he's ready for you to win, you're going to win. Can someone praise him and say, i got to do the will of God in order to win this battle? God wants you to win every battle you have. Relationships. Maybe you're battling in a relationship and you're struggling, you know, with somebody. Maybe it's your, your sibling, your brother, your sister. Maybe it's your child, your parent. Maybe it's husband, wife. Maybe it's um, somebody, your job. Whatever your battles are, God has a will on how to fix everything. Don't you want God to fix your problems? But start doing the will of God and you'll see. I want to go to Colossians 1 verse 9. We love this verse. I love it. Let me read it to you. It says... Colossians 1 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Right? Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness. It says, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We should be thanking God that we are partakers of him. If you accepted Jesus Christ, you know what? You did the will of God. Can someone praise him this morning? You are already in the right path. The minute you ask Jesus to save you, you have eternal life. Now you're on a journey. You have a journey and a destiny for your life. And here's the destiny. You know what God's will is? Number one, his will is his word. When his word says something, you know that this is his will. Can someone say amen to that? God can't contradict his word. You know, you don't have to say, Lord, is it your will that I rob a bank? The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Lord, is it your will for me to... Um, Lie to somebody. You know, you know, the Bible says we should not bear false witness. Lord, is it your will for me to hate on my parents? No one says, honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you. See, so the scriptures say all these things. So the Bible is the number one source that you go through when you're looking for an answer from God. Amen? That's the first thing that you need. But what does it say? He says this, that you need to be filled with the knowledge of his will. will. In spiritual understanding, it says that he might be Walk worthy unto the Lord, right? Being fruitful. And it says, in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. So how do you do the will of God? You need to increase in knowledge. You need to increase in wisdom. You can't do God's will without wisdom. You've got to have his wisdom. Where does his wisdom come from? One, it comes from the Bible, like I said. It says you cannot do his will unless you are increasing in the knowledge of God. They prayed that Paul says to the Colossians, the church of, you know, the Colossians, he says, I pray that you would grow. How do you grow through wisdom? He says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So what is wisdom? Applied word. We need to start applying the word to our daily life. Amen? And you know, it's, it's not easy to always apply the word because it goes against our knowledge and our flesh. And, and what happens when we do it, we increase in the knowledge of God and we get strengthened. The, the word gives strength. It says, according to his power. How else do you do the will of God besides getting wisdom? Here's the second thing you need to do. You need to be strengthened by his power. You say, how do I get his power? You know how you get his power? Power comes when we ask it. You know what? You have not because you ask not. You know what? The Bible says power in, in, in the book of Psalm, chapter 62. It says, I, God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Do you know that power belongs unto him? So why don't we ask? Why don't we have it? We're not asking for it. You want God's will. You want, you need to start applying the word to you. need to ask for his power. You need his power to overcome these challenges. Amen? And then what does it say? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience, long suffering, and joyfulness. How many people like to be patient? Hurry up and wait. Is that how we are? When a guy slows, when you're driving 40 miles an hour, and a guy gets, when you come up on a guy, he's only 35, how happy does that make you feel? I'm very happy, right? We're very impatient people, right? We want to get going, but God is very patient, and he's looking for us to be more patient, and he's looking for us to be more 
Patient and long-suffering. Long-suffering. Have you waited a while? There's a reason why. The longer the wait, the bigger the reward. The longer the wait, the bigger the reward. The longer the wait, because God says, you wait longer, you're going to get a bigger blessing. Can someone praise God? You're waiting longer, and if you have a penny's worth of problems, you're not going to have a million-dollar dream with a penny's worth of problems. If you have a million-dollar dream, or billion-dollar dream, however big your dream is, you're going to have a lot of problems. Because the more you go higher, bigger levels, or higher levels, bigger devils. The more attacks you get, that means you're growing higher, you're getting closer. Can someone praise God? Right. And so, how do you get his will? you got to ask for his power. How do you get his will? You've got to be pleasing unto the Lord. That means follow him, please him. Now, I want to get to Ephesians chapter 5. So, this is very important. This is what happens when we don't have the will of God in our lives. We do things out of the will of God, we get in trouble. You know what? I still have the scars to prove it. Some of the, the things that I've done on my own, God told me, don't do this, and I did it anyway. Ouch. That's all I can say. Big ouchie. When you're doing things that aren't God's plan, we do our plan, it's always an ouch, isn't it? You know, I love that scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. How do you understand God's will? You've got to acknowledge him and let him direct your path. We are... Sometimes self-willed people who like to just go into the logic and make our own decisions. So what does it say? Ephesians chapter 5, and what am I going to read? I'm going to read verse 14. It says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. How many people are sleeping today? <laughs> are we taking a nap? <sighs> Wake up! <laughs> We gotta wake up and do the will of God for our lives. Amen. God wants you to wake up because He's got a plan. A lot of people just walk through the go through the motions of Christianity. And you know what? We're dead. We gotta wake up. We gotta start doing God's will. We gotta start hearing from the Lord. Then what does it say? See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but wise. You know what circumspectly means? It means diligently or carefully. Are you watching? Guess what? The devil is after you. You want to do God's will? You've got to watch carefully what's going on. You've got to pay attention. You've got to be careful. Here's the reason. Satan is watching you. He wants to get you. He wants to get you out of God's will. He wants to divide and conquer. He wants to divide and conquer your friendships. Divide and conquer your marriages. Divide and conquer your friendships. Divide your relationships. Make you doubt God. Get you all discouraged. Get you all given up. Get you quitting. I've been waiting so long. Nothing's happening. Lord, I quit on this thing. God doesn't want you quitting. You're almost there. 26.2 miles is a long marathon. You're in a marathon right now. Don't quit at 25 miles. Don't quit at 26.1. Finish your course. Get your reward. God is about ready to open doors. Let's watch and wait and be waiting on God, believing that his will will be accomplished for your life. Let's be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is a warm lining. Walking about, seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5 8. He's the devil is trying to stop you. So we got to be circumspectly walking before the Lord. Amen? Amen. That means diligently. Are you diligently seeking him? How many people are diligently seeking the Lord? Amen. You know what? You got to watch because your enemy's trying to take you out. People are trying to take you out, people are coming at you. You know what? People are giving you dirty looks and they, they don't like it. You know why? Because you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. People don't like God. They hate God. This world is all about hating God. God is being pushed out of everything. You know, perversion is being brought into everything. We see what's going on today in our community, in our society, and in our world. God is being removed out of everything. Out of schools, get removed out of our country. No more God. They're bringing in all kinds of secularism, they're bringing in everything, transgenderism, you know, LGBTQIAXYZQTBLAMW squared to the second power of perversion. <laughs> Is this what's going on today? And then we'll hit you with a jab and hopefully you're going to be all right. But you know what? Without not starting to find out, things aren't so good. You can't trust the government. You can't trust what they're doing. They say it's good, and then all of a sudden, you look around. 
Then we start finding, oh, this could really be harmful about six months later. Yeah, of course it's harmful because the government's behind it all. But if you take it, God will protect you because, you know, you have the Holy Spirit. So if you say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, I'm protected. You know, I'm drinking any deadly thing that will not hurt me. God will protect you. But the government is trying to destroy us, get us out of the will of God, get us focusing on our finances, get us focusing on what's going on in our world. You know, but here's the good news. God's will is that he's coming back soon. His will is coming to you. He's coming to me. He's going to rule and reign. He's going to be in your life. He's an awesome God. So what does it say? We need to walk circumspectly. How many people? You've got to watch. You know when someone comes at you angry, just chill. Because you know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, wait. Instead of responding, say, you know what? I know where that's coming from. That's the devil trying to get a reaction out of me. So I can spout my mouth off and make it worse. God wants you to learn from these things. Amen? He wants you to do his will. He wants you to understand his plan. Do you know what his plan for you is amazing? I want to get into his plan in a moment. Now look what it says. It says, walk carefully, circumspectly. Don't be as a fool. A fool just walks through life and not paying attention. The enemy's doing this and that. We're not focusing. We've got to watch. Don't be a fool, but be wise. Verse 16 says, redeeming the time for the days of evil. You know what that means? Making the most of your time. You know what? Your time is valuable. Are you making good time? What are you doing with your time? You know what? Husbands and wives have time together. I just said something. Yeah. Husbands and wives, date nights, spend time together. Love on each other. Your time is valuable with each other. Amen? That goes to all you guys, all you women out there. You guys got to do it. Spend time. Oh, I'm just doing it. No. I don't like what he's doing. I don't like what she's doing. You know what? Get over it and go. <laughs> do it anyway. Can someone say amen? Yeah. You know, that's called, there's a thing called compromise that always works out good. Sometimes a healthy compromise between the two is a good thing, isn't it? Yep. And love on each other. Make good time. Work on your time. Spend time with God. Have some prayer time. Have some time alone with Jesus. Have some time alone in prayer. Have some time reading the word. Amen? We get so busy on our phones that we're, we're wasting our time on phones and on texts and on this and that. It's okay to use it all, but don't let it consume up your time. Your time is valuable, you know. Time is important. You know, people, they charge money by time, right? I'm working on your car for an hour. I'm charging you 80, 100, 120 bucks an hour. To just Time is important. So we've got to redeem the time. That means make good use of your time. You want to do God's will? Make good use of your time. Don't waste time. Then what does it say? Here's the, here's the scripture I've been waiting to get to. Verse 17. Wherefore, be not unwise. What's the title of the series? Acquiring wisdom? Be not unwise. You know what unwise is? But understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do you know what? People don't always understand what the will of the Lord is, what God's plan is for their life. You say, I don't know about that. How many people have watched that show, American Idol? Has anyone watched that before? <laughs> have you ever seen some people get up there and sing and they're horrendous to the point where, I mean, Simon's eyes are like... <laughs> when he hears the voice, has anyone ever seen that before on TV? They think it's the will of God, or it's, it's that the plan is for them to be some famous singer. They think they're great. But they're the most ghastly people I've ever heard in my life. It's absolutely dreadful. <laughs> Finally, they get it, right? <coughs> I don't agree with you. Oh, well, you know, he's right. <laughs> You're ghastly. <laughs> you don't sing good at all. What does this mean? People try to do something they're not meant to do. Not everybody's meant to be up here preaching. This is what I'm called to do. This is God's will for me. So I said, Lord, I'm doing it because this is what you've called me to do. Whether we have a few people or a thousand people, it doesn't matter who it is. This is my mission. God has a calling for you. It says don't be, un don't be unwise. If you're doing something you're not meant to be, you know, I could do something, try to do something. I could be a mechanic tomorrow. I'm going to start... Working on some muscle cars. I'll be a mechanic. Me, Mr. Computer Guy, an accountant. I'm going to go back there and start fixing, working on some cars. I'm going to start breaking stuff. And then you'll have to fix it after. I'll make it worse. 
It's ten times worse than it was before. How about a heart surgeon? Let me get in there. It's God's will. I thought it's, you want me working on your heart? I don't think so. We better make sure we're doing what we're called to do. What God's plan is, his destiny for your life. Understand what the will of the Lord is. People sometimes do things. They think it's because I want to be like him. I want to be this. I want to. How about what God wants you to do? We don't ask God what his will is. So how do you understand the will of God? You've got to ask the Lord. It says, wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You know why we don't ask him? Because we don't want to get an, an answer we don't like. God may say you have to wait 10 years for this. Would you still keep going? Would you still keep going? God may say you have to write again. Are you, would you be willing to write again? I have to write this whole proposal out. I have to keep writing this stuff. God may say you have to do this. You have to study. Oh, I saw her a bang back there. I said, Dwayne. I don't know. I think that was God's will. <laughs> Somebody get an egg on the back of their head. But anyway. <laughs> um, God says it may not be easy. It may be hard. But you've got to understand his will. So here's what you need to do. You say, I'm in this mess. You know what? I keep getting things from the Lord saying, keep doing this. i got to keep going. Do you want to keep growing? Then you got to keep going. You want to grow? you got to go. And you've got to go forward. And then when the Lord is showing you something, you've got to understand it. Say, Lord, what do I got to do here? Has anyone ever asked the Lord what to do? Some people, they keep going and doing the wrong thing over and over and over. They keep doing the wrong thing time and time again. And then they go, why, did I, why isn't it working? It's because if you ask if this is God's will, it's very important. I was in a relationship last year. You know, I'm thinking everything's got, that was a kind of a flub up. I didn't really ask, you know, I'd say, hey, he's a nice girl, ask her out, we'll go out, and it's fine, I'm single, she's single, I'm single, now I'm single, right, so, single, let's mingle, but so, what do we do? Out on a date, and what happens? Everything seems fine at first, but God's like, did you ever ask about this? <laughs> Whoops. What did I do? I didn't even ask. Well, that's all right. I'm single. And the Lord's like, did you ask? Not very. And then all of a sudden, things were getting a little bit out of hand on their side because I'm a Christian and I can't do some things that they want to do, obviously. Now I'm in a mess because I didn't do God's will. All of a sudden, I'm dealing with these problems, these temptations, these things that I would have never had to deal with. And now all of a sudden, it's all in my, all in my, pro, you know, in my grill and I got to do something about it. Then all of a sudden I gotta break it up. And then there's all kinds of pain and agony and frustration and trouble and questions and what happened? What you know, and it's all these problems. What happened was I didn't do the will of God. That's what happened. If I would have prayed first, I wouldn't have had to deal with it. But no, I really want to go right into this. This is great. Woo! How many people look at you all looking at me like you're the you know the only guys that are righteous out there? I'm these big sinners. You work sinners than I am. <laughs> We're all sinners. Have you all done this? Have you all done something and look back and say, what did I do? How do I get out of this? You know? Sometimes we pray, oh Lord, please, uh, you know, send me this uh, woman into my life. And then when you get her, it's like, oh Lord, please get this woman out of my life. <laughs> God's like, I didn't give it to you, you did it yourself. Because I didn't understand the will of God for my life. If you would just ask, you may not like it. God said, no, she's not for you. Well, I don't want her anyway. No, well, don't take her. See, we don't want to hear it. So we're busy just pushing ahead. God wants you to ask what steps you need to take. The steps to take, you've got to ask him which ones. And do it. When someone keeps telling you to do something over and over, the Holy Spirit's telling you, People are telling you. You start getting confirmation. It means it's time to move. Understand the will of God. Go, oh, Lord, I heard this. Is this of you? Don't be unwise. Okay? Okay. Now, let me go to James real quick. Yeah, I was getting right to it. It kind of connects. So let me go to James. There's a couple more verses. Let's get another 5, 10 minutes. Can you guys handle another 5, 10? 
You're like, hurry up and get this thing over with. I got to go. I'm hungry. I want some breakfast. But anyway, the game is on. No, it's not on until one. But anyway. <laughs> and now my fantasy football is on until after. I've been stinking it up, so it's all good. It's God's will for me to stink. <laughs> No, man, I don't want to even go there. But anyway, people love it, too. Oh, that pastor is losing. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, <laughs> let me go to James. James chapter 4. This is what we do. It says, go to now. James 4, verse 13. Go to now, ye that say, today and tomorrow, we will go into such a city and we will continue there. A year and buy and sell and get gain. Hey, we'll just go and do whatever we're gonna do. I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna get gain, I'm gonna invest here, invest there, I'm gonna invest in stocks, invest in bonds, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna buy this house, sell this house, invest in a car, do all these things. And it says, Whereas ye know not what ye shall be on the morrow. For what is your life that is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away? Can someone say amen to that? How short is life? It goes by quick, right? I'm an 80s child. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, you know, so I'm Gen X. It feels like yesterday I was like, in, you know, in the 90s, 80s, 90s. Now it's like, what happened? Then all of a sudden you hit 50. And look, I just recently did, and I'm like, what happened? How did I get here so quickly? It's life is a vapor. You're 50. Oh, I'm not that old. Well, guess what? Your 50 will come quicker than you think. Life is as a vapor, it just, it slashes before your eyes. And it's whoosh, gone. It's like a vapor. You know what vapor? That's your life. I mean, if you're 50, that means you don't have too many more years left. You get some years, but if you get another 50 years, you're very fortunate. And believe me, as you get 50, the time gets faster. It goes by quicker. So then you're going into an eternity. Don't you want to go in the right way, into heaven? Because your life is a vapor, amen? So we need to focus on God because he's got an eternal plan for you. And he wants to bless you in the remaining years that you're here, amen? amen. Then what does he say? For you ought to say this. You understand the will of God. If the Lord will, if it's your will, we will live and do this or that. Can someone praise God? Amen. If it's your will, I will buy this house. If it is your will, I will invest in this stock. If it is your will, I'll win this court case on my own. If it's your will, I will cast out this devil out of this house. If it's your will, I'm going to get this new job. If it's your will, I'm going to surrender to the ministry. If it's your will, I'm going to play drums. I'm going to play drums like this brother prayed for the Lord's will. And he was here this Sunday, praise God. He didn't just say, I'm going to play this week. All right. He came on Thursday. We liked him. He liked us. It was a blessing. And all of a sudden, he says, I'm going to pray on it. I'll get back to you. Amen. He followed the Bible. Amen. If it's your will, I'll do this or do that. Amen? Amen. It says, but now you, you rejoice in your own boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. It's evil to be self-willed. It's evil to do things on your own. I mean, and it's going to come back to bite you every time. Because when you do things outside of God's will, it always gets messed up. You know what happens when you don't go to God's will? First thing that happens is confusion. Why didn't this work out? Now you're confused. Here's the second thing. Pain. Because now you're facing the repercussions for what you did that was out of God's will. Third thing that happens when you, you don't do God's will. The enemy gets in now. Look, it didn't work out. The devil starts attacking you. On and on it goes. Okay? And so it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you know to follow God's will and you do things on your own, it's a sin, isn't it? Now I'm going to go to Hebrews. I love this scripture. How many people, you know what a need is? You know what a need, a need? How many people have need of things? You know what? Do you need water? Okay, if you about three, four days without water, you'll be in big trouble. Do you need food? Yeah. Do you need a roof over your head? Yeah. Today we need a car, don't we, to get somewhere? Yeah. Okay, we need certain things in our lives, right? Do you need to breathe out of your mouth and nose? Yeah. <laughs> that means it's something that's required that you have to have in order to make it. 
in life. That's a need. You need this in order to survive. Now look at this. The will of God. It says, I like this. Verse 35, Hebrews chapter 10. It says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence with that great recompense of reward. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't give up. Because there's great recompense of reward. If you are staying faith, keep your faith. Keep speaking the victory. Stop speaking this isn't working. Stop speaking that this is taking too long. Stop speaking that this is a you're sick of this. Stop speaking that this isn't going to happen. Stop speaking, I don't know what you're doing, Lord. Stop speaking, I know what you're doing, Lord. You're doing something big. You're working behind the scenes. You've got my back. You're going to open up bigger doors. I'm going to stay confident in the Lord because God is able to do more than I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. So I'm going to speak life. I'm speaking to this mountain be removed. And God will remove any mountain that you are facing. And if you stay confident and bold and you come boldly to Jesus, mountains are going to start shaking and things are going to start moving and you are going to start seeing your victory. Don't cast away your confidence, but be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. <laughs> cast not away therefore your confidence. Which have great recompense. You know what great recompense is? Do you know what it is? Hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, thousandfold. Don't cast it away. Don't cast it away. Don't cast it away. Keep your confidence. You know what? How do you win? Confidence. You know this baseball, I'm going to close soon, but you know baseball, there's closers in baseball? Some closers, they close the game out, pitchers. The best closer ever was Mariano Rivera from the Yankees. I don't know how people don't like the Yankees, and I don't understand. I'm a, I'm a, I don't like the Yankees either. But he was, I got to say, he was, well, probably he was a Christian. He was one of the greatest closers ever. And he didn't have the most blazing fastball in the world. He had a great cutter. But you know what he had more than anything? Confidence. That guy, when he walked on the, I'm a Red Sox fan. When he came on the mound, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, man, again. This game's over. We're done. And it usually was because the guy was just so good. You got to give him respect. The guy was amazing. i never seen a closer like him. And then you got these Red Sox guys coming and pap them on. They're all nervous. One wiping their brow. They're all, the guy's getting rocked, home run. I'm like, because the guy is not confident. He's too nervous. He's not confident what he's doing. If you're confident, you can overcome anything. If you're confident, you're going to do better in life. You'll do better in your marriage. You'll do better in your business. You'll do better with your, your family. You'll do better in everything. You'll be better with God. Be confident in who you are. Be confident in what you do. Then look at this. Verse 36. It says, I love this. Remember I talked about need? Ricky was right all over that. Be of need of what? Of patience. For at that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. That word might is not an iffy iffy. That might in the Greek means you will be able to and you will receive the promise. So what does it say? After you've done the will of God, you're going to receive his promise that he promised you. So you must do the will of God 100%. Keep going, doing what God says. Stop casting away your confidence. Stop being discouraged. Stop thinking like you're going to throw the towel in. Get up. Get going. Do the will of God. And the promise is going to be amazing in your life. So the will of God. You want to understand the will of God? In your life, the will of God? You've got to be patient. We want it when we want it. We want it now. We want it immediately. Precipices right away. I got to have it right now. We've got to wait on God. You know, we've got to wait. It's His timing. And then I'm going to close with this Psalm 25, real quick. I don't want to keep going too long because I can ramble on. I know that. I'll ramble all day. You know how I am. So people are like, hurry up now. Psalm 25. In verse 4 and 5, it says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. You know what you need to do? You need to ask the Lord to teach you how to discern his plan. Say, Lord, show me your plan. Show me your path. And look at it. It says, lead me in thy truth. Say, Lord, show me and lead me. 
It says, it teach me. Yeah, you don't ask the, the Lord to teach you. You only want to get taught by somebody to get better at something. If you're a person in a field or whatever, you teach people how to work and teach people how to do things. You're a boss or whatever. You gotta ask the Lord to teach you. You gotta be teachable to do, understand the will of God. You gotta be humble. We gotta get rid of the pride and say, Lord, show me, teach me, help me. Let me not be unwise. Teach me to do this right. And, and it says, For thou art a God of my salvation. You save me. I love this right here. And you feel the psalmist when he says this On thee do I wait all the day, all the week. All the month, all the year, I'm waiting on you, Lord, all the day. <laughs> you can see it all day long. I'm waiting, Lord. When do I ever stop waiting? When is this ever going to change? And you can see it in him. All, he could have just said, I wait on you, Lord. No, I wait on you all the day. All day long, I'm waiting. When is this going to change? When is this going to work out? And then look at verse 20. Nine. It says, the meek he will guide in judgment, and the meek he will teach his way. You want to understand his will? Be meek. Meek is not weak. It means humble. Be humble. Be humble to the point where you're willing to follow him. And then look at this. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, and such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. So God, he's merciful, he's truthful, and he will bless you. You want to do his will? You're going to get his best. How many people are ready for his best? Start doing his will, and you are going to be praising him for his blessing. Amen? Amen. All right. The message is finished. Amen. So I pray that we blessed you today. Before I close the message, I'd like to give you a chance to receive Christ as your Savior. If you have not received him as Lord, I'll give you an opportunity to pray that prayer. And uh, all you got to do is know you're a sinner. Turn from your sins. It's God's will for you to be saved. It says it's not the will of God that any should perish. It's his plan and his purpose for you to get saved. That's what his will is. Not only is it his will for you to do it, but the first step for you, if you have not thought you want to get in God's will, get saved. That means you receive Christ in your heart, repent of your sins, call upon him and ask him to save you. I'll pray this prayer. If you repeat this and really mean it in your heart, you will have salvation and you will have eternal life. Your life won't be a vapor anymore on this earth. It'll be eternal. You will go on forever. Life is a vapor, but you go on for eternity. And every day will be, you'll be young. When you're in heaven, you're going to look like you're 22 every day of the year. You're going to look amazing up there in heaven. You'll never age. You won't have crow's feet. You won't have a gray popping out of the side of your sideburn or your beard. You know what? You won't have um, those nose hairs bulging out and ZZ top growing out of the side of your ears. Some of you guys think you're deaf, but you think you need a weed whacker, is what you need. <laughs> Those guitar strings come out of your eyebrows, you know what I'm talking about? Ow! You know, you guys go, oh god, this guy is 50, isn't he? <laughs> hair on the back, ow! Oh! What well, if I turn into a hobbit or something? But anyway. Hair in places you didn't expect. They don't tell you this in school or in health class. <laughs> oh boy, but anyway. Jesus wants to save you. He loves you. It's his will. All you gotta do is receive him in your heart. You accept Jesus in your heart, repent of your sins, you'll have eternal life. He loves you. He says, come to me. Could you pray with him this morning and accept him? And you will have eternal life. That's the will of God. So I'm going to pray. If you repeat this prayer and mean it, the Bible says, you call upon the name of the Lord, you are definitely going to be saved and you'll have eternal life. Let's pray. Lord, Father, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I receive your Holy Spirit. I accept you as my Savior. I repent. I'm sorry for my sin. Wash me in your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. You pray. You are a child of God. And uh, you did God's will perfectly. God bless you.